When life hits you with a two by four, are you facing big blocks or challenges in your life? For sure you've been there before, we all have. I've learned the hard way that blocks can mean there is something to look at that you are avoiding. You might be overlooking things, choosing to ignore them, or even more commonly, burying suppressed emotions. People often feel it's safer to push their old hurts and experiences deep, deep, down inside the dark, unyielding caverns of their inner selves. Impediments can happen when you are not dealing with or confronting what is presently on your plate or within your depths, which includes all the bottled up energy and memories of your past, as well as fears about the future. Countless anxieties and disease-riddled, erratic thoughts can pulse within your brain and body as you repetitively and worriedly obsess about your personal life and its problems or uncertainties, as well as the world around you. You can face opposition, obstruction or even destruction when you are too scared to talk and walk your truth are vexed and weighed down by current stresses and past hurts. You may also be fearful of what is yet to come, even if on a purely subconscious level. For some of you, if you are not silently or outwardly hysterical, then you are lost in the maelstrom, hiding in the shadows, masking your pain, faking it but never quite making it presenting a somewhat synthetic identity or living someone else's life and not your own. Your authenticity has been authored or tainted by the hands of something or someone outside of yourself that was never real to begin with. Alas, you're waking up to the fantasy. And if you haven't got there by yourself, then you've been hit by a two by four. What happens when this happens? Perhaps the following story will help paint a picture of what I am trying to convey. Last year, I broke my foot twice. The irony is that on the day I broke my foot, I was truly ready to exercise. I actually said to myself, I'm ready. But what did I do instead of putting on my runners and heading outdoors? I decided to ignore my clear, excited intuition and vacuum instead because walking would be wasting my time when I have so many things to do. As I made my way downstairs, I stepped on the coiled vacuum tube. My foot dramatically rolled left and I heard three distinct loud cracks whose haunting sound has echoed in my brain ever since. Ouch. Two months later, one night I took off my well-worn moon boot and hobbled to the bathroom. On the way, there my foot accidentally hooked into an open rip in the seam of a blanket draping over my bed. Funnily, my intuition noticed that seam leading up to this day, telling me to fix it, but alas, I ignored it. I flew forwards and down with a giant thud, slammed my otherwise recovering foot hard on the ground, and in a crazy random instant, I had quite unglamorously broken it yet again. What the F? One year later, I still can't walk 100% properly, nor can I wear heels. That once twice fractured foot does not feel the same, nor probably ever will. To add to all this, over this long period, the impact of my repetitive injury placed a great strain and pressure on my other good foot, which had to do overtime to compensate for all that pain, immobility and awkwardness. Quite ironically, my good foot had now become my bad foot, as it formed a very real new medical condition called plantar fasciitis as well as a heel spur, to the point that it can be really painful and I can't walk or be on my feet for long. This happened right at the time that my pain specialist for my migraines advised me to exercise walk every day and progressively increase my distance. Despite my good intent, that all went out the window. 
I couldn't even do most of my physio exercises, let alone walk. When I get out of bed, I look like a drunk elephant. There's been times when I've leaned on the shoulders of my 11-year-old son at the mall and I've gotten my kids to get the groceries. So that's an example of what the F universe? God, do you want my soul to just take it? This came after 26 years of debilitating migraines, chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia on top of all the impediments that come with being a highly empathic psychic person. I know plenty of people have it far off worse than myself, so I've learned to accept each thing as it comes and roll with it. Never ever fight it. Just like paddling vigorously against the wild currents, it's just not worth the battle and you'll end up even more exhausted and downtrodden. I often wonder why certain people develop particular illnesses, injuries, or face mountainous blocks or challenges at particular phases of their lives. Of course, I know that there is a higher meaning and deeper reference to these hurdles, hindrances, aches, and cracks. It comes through in my sessions with clients time and time again, which is why I like to get to the root of the problem, dig it out, excavate if needed, reveal it tenderly with love, show it for what it is and has been, and then let it go in a highly charged puff of energetic metaphoric smoke. This way, ultimate repair, release, transmutation and transformation can occur. Just like when light enters a crack, chasm or God-given gap in a dark, grueling cave, that slither of light offers a bright promise of hope, help and inspiration. It gloriously emerges just like the light of spring bounds forth from the shadows of winter. You fall, you rise, you glide, you stumble. Welcome little calf to the seasons of life. Just as winter closes, so too does spring eventually fade and the cycles of life continue. My clients who have experienced this know exactly what I'm talking about. It's the ultimate way of truly healing and discharging because thanks to cosmic intervention, an opening in the crevice is provided so that truth can emerge and a shift can happen. One of my biggest lessons has been that sometimes you cannot move forward until you deal with the present. My angels and guides gave me this line while I was driving as an answer to my prayers about why I was getting these foot issues. They clearly and loudly bellowed, you can't move forward until you deal with the present. The words were direct, heartfelt and clear, coupled with electrified knowing impulses that completely engulfed and awakened my being. It was like a shower of inspiration spray graciously over me. Thankfully, I trust my booming intuition, am open to guidance and am wise enough now to follow its heed. So when we face these often unexpected predicaments, we need to look at what is present in our current life so that we can truly see what is revealing itself beyond the illusions or even facades we or others have bestowed upon it. We need to take a big brave look and perceive whether there is a monstrous white elephant or several weird and strangely wonderful creatures in the room of our life. At these times what is required is a reality check which entails getting real. Getting real means opening up those curtains you've self-secured and shut a long time ago. Prying those heavy, dusty old drapes wide open lets the light in and allows energy to flow and circulate and truth to be revealed. However, if your blinds are closed and door is wedged shut, then you are not truly ready or willing to even turn the light switch on yourself and take a look at your own reality. When this is the case, you will not make headway. All your hesitation, fear or blindsightedness will lead to further hiccups, hills and road bumps. And that is when depression, stagnation, 
isolation and fear creep in or set in deeper and linger. The impending build-up to getting real often leads to deflection. That is because you sense what is coming and want to dodge the bullet, target someone else or ricochet it back from whence it came. Deflection is a form of distraction as you are refracting from facing your problems and purposefully swerving off course. These days, distraction is the new procrastination and it's most often witnessed, for example, when one unconsciously immerses oneself in the lost world of technology. Just like cyberspace is indeed real, energy is too. One takes up time, the other takes up space. Are you willing to get real? Dealing with the stuff of now requires opening up a space in your life and being in the present moment, which requires great sustainability and presence. Presence requires surrendering, centering oneself and getting grounded, which in turn needs focus. Focus requires discipline and discipline entails commitment. We can go round and round the merry-go-round loop of what is needed versus what is enacted, so it may pay to take a big look at where you are on the discipline versus distraction or lost versus strict goal-setting wheel of life. A broken ship won't sail effortlessly without repair. A captain can't stick to a schedule and sail ahead when the hull is torn, engine worn and weather forlorn. He needs to take heed of any warnings, remain alert and aware, follow the signs of the seas and stay on top of the job. It is not until you see the hurdles that you can overcome them. Hindsight repairs all that foresight you ignored and liberates you through its wisdom. Once your vision is more clear, you can then truly discover what is present behind the veils and walls and come to terms with your either stagnant or ever problematic reality program. You are now set to tackle the problems, work through the discomfort, break through the burdens, release the shackles and turn over a new leaf of your life. Once you maintain and repair your vessel, recalibrate your navigational system and let the sun shine on your sails, you can then set off towards a brand new horizon. I learned all this the hard way through one pressing foot issue after another, but all along, whether active or dormant, and through all sorts of seasons, I knew there was a higher reason, meaning and purpose to all of this. One thing I know for sure is that pauses and setbacks are here for a reason. It's blaringly obvious to me these days and it's the crux of mindfully navigating life. So what should you do when life hits you with a 2 by 4 The trick is to surrender and get ready to swim with the tides. Lean into its wisdom, journey with its winds and travel wherever it is taking you. Rather than abandon your ship or float to the surface like a bobbing cork with nowhere to go, it is wiser to run, hobble and move with the flow. Sometimes we do need to push through and persevere. Other times we are better off hearing and heeding the call, stopping and realising we need to halt, pause and retreat no matter how that interferes with our everyday life and the many loads and demands put on us. We also need to take a conscious break from what society and its sheeple tell us is right, wrong or expected. Ugh, that word, like should, is relentlessly repellent to me and makes me fall into an eternal pit of cringe and despair. As post-industrial, modern, super-tech, over-stimulated, bombarded and overwhelmed souls trapped in modern human bodies, we are under so much pressure. We tax and strain ourselves trying to make order out of chaos. We squeeze, force, push and pull. We will do whatever it takes to jam that big square peg into that darn little circular hole. 
Simply put, we have exhausted our output and diminished our input. Our wires are crossed, circuits burned, and there are missing pieces, like the fragments of our soul that become scattered and lost. We are just not coping. So long as we wear a Nike top and Hollywood-worthy active wear to the mall, holding our tall skinny latte in a pretty portable cup with our perfectly arched, fake painted nails, we can appear like all is well in our busy micro worlds. In my world, busy equals this secretive acronym, B-U-S-Y. B, bullshit, U, underlying, S, silent, Y, yelping. So bullshit, underlying, silent, yelping. That's what busy really is. That is also why anxiety and OCD is so rife. As an ingrained empath and professional or even hidden psychic, I am able to very easily pick up OCD in a person no matter how they disguise it. It can be expressed in a woman who's been cleaning the house hysterically as a way to cope and avoid her marital life woes, or insanely scrubbing every house tile in order to avoid piled up personal issues of self-loathing, angst, profound doubt and hopelessness in a pool of deprecatingly low self-esteem. She might try to convince her wounded feminine spirit that if only I clean enough, do enough, be enough, then everything might be okay and I will be happy, seen and accepted. But happiness never comes. She might be fooled for a moment, but then it quickly fades away again. Why is it that we have so many band-aids that constantly cover and fall off our deeply wounded scars? We have been brainwashed into a pseudo-culture of cosmetically dressing over our cracks, perfecting our facades, secretly drowning our miserable sorrows and masking our inherent truths as we swim aimlessly in an unforgiving troll-filled sea of materialistic obsession and the hypnotic psychosis of what's trending. Let's face it, we are uber simulated and overstimulated. Like overcooked stuffed capsicums, saturated in juices and contaminated in fats of various meats and other additions, losing the true essence of those once raw, crisp, vitamin popping peppers, and I'm not vegan, we have stuffed our stuff with stuff. Whichever way you stumble through the fakeness, chaos or stormy weather in your life, the challenge is to realize and release. But first you must surrender. That is my special mantra that in fact the angels gave me in a moment of celestial imbued clarity and I use it time and time again in my energy work with my clients. It certainly works in restoring one's crazed and hidden inner world in an external world that is faux, glossy and demanding. What I have come to learn is to acknowledge, surrender, transmute and more pressingly make the changes that are underlying and underpinning all of this frenetic mayhem that are screaming through the crevices of the slightly open solid door of your consciousness that you otherwise slammed shut. For there is always honest reason and God-blessed rhythm behind the mad rhyme of life. Often stumbling blocks lead to change. The hurdles you face are precipices of a great shift happening or they foreshadow something bigger to come. It's grand, it's liberating, and it's an evolution. So where are you in the great mountain of life? Ascending, descending, climbing, sliding, struggling, triumphing, racing, breaking, pausing, retreating, viewing, absorbing? And did you think there was just one mountain? I'm here to tell you that there are masses of mountains and oodles of hills, valleys, gullies, abysses, caves, 
dunes and rivers. Just as there is land, so too there are oceans and puddles and galleons of molecules and particles in between. Just like a horse or athlete that is trained on the track, it is better that you know all this now than be surprised or shocked, disappointed, dismayed when the next hurdle comes. You need to place sheaths over your periphery vision to avoid being distracted and a shield over your body to protect you from the constant mayhem of the energy world we are in. In this mammoth age of transcendent awakening, you are being given the space and grace for greater truth, growth and real expansion. You have the potential to level up and when you consciously reach each pinnacle, it feels brilliant. You sparkle and shine and feel pure space opening up so gracefully and graciously within and around you. Sometimes spirit echo the mysterious universe, that shared expanse of limitless energy that engulfs and pervades our soul, provides you with the obstacles in order for you to finally face what you haven't been willing to look at or deal with, so that once you do, boom, a whole new reality appears and expands before your eyes. You are now more open and free as you take another step towards your true destiny and pure plight without that horrible interference you were facing before, that static, hissing, electrical energy in your life that showed you that you were trapped between stations and not quite tuned in yet to a higher frequency, yet all you had to do was be aware of it because then the potential would be there for you to turn that etheric knob. Once you are up a notch or two in your radioactive world, you realise it. It's an unmistakable feeling of clarity and lightness of being. You've moved out of your uncomfortability and the agonising abrasion and things are much more smooth, harmonious, open and clear. There's an evolved contentedness and clarity seeping strongly through your therapized bones and resounding in your energy field. You are in a bright new world. You have received an upgrade. Perhaps your own personal situation, whatever that may be, no matter how colossal or trivial, severe or microscopic, or whatever your own little series of tumultuous impediments might be, will eventually lead to some kind of change, or even more ultimately, a breakthrough will arise. But in the meandering process, you must be patient, open, aware, trusting and willing to accept, peel back the layers, face the truth, and truly want to make a massive difference in the mundane, recurring, miserable treadmill of your life, rather than constantly clasping at the illusory comfort of old mildewy straws, cobwebbed circumstances, endlessly spiralling problems and entrapping cyclical patterns. Do you want to revolve around the same cogwheel of life or evolve as a person? Perhaps you've been too busy being human to realise it. Either way, whatever you choose, do know that the choice is yours and that the work you do on restoring and freeing yourself with unbridled open awareness can make a difference in the level you rise or fall, plunge or take flight. How you handle things and the significant strides you can potentially make. It is by no mistake that the saying, when one door closes, another one opens, is a sure thing. Wouldn't you like to open a door to a bright new world? Maybe, just maybe, that obstacle you face is the answer to your prayers. A call from heaven, a blessing in disguise. Perhaps even if you could will yourself to get optimistic for just one blessed moment. 
you might even see it as a mini miracle. At the very least, it might open up a gateway for transformation of some sort to take place. Amen. Check out my website, nataliacorner.com, for many self-development and spiritual topics, courses and services.